Good morning and thank you very much for joining us. I am Yuri Folari. Um, well, just a day after our 64th birthday as a nation, you know, happy independence is still in order, even as it was a, a low-key event um, uh, this year. Just about everybody, you know, in view of the challenges, uh, most of it um, captured in the mood of the president's uh, address, independence address. But here we are. We thank God for life, and um, we also thank God for hope. Uh, we got assurances that um, work is going on right round the clock, and even though it might still seem as if we are uh, challenged um, so very, very, uh, in, a, so in such a difficult way, uh, but that for all of this, as we heard the president express yesterday, uh, better days are to come. The president had appealed for patience. Now, let's continue on that stream and um, looking at various aspects um, of the situation. Our guest this morning um, is a Niger Delta spokesperson, Chief Anabs Sara Igbe. He's the National Coordinator, South South Elders Forum, and pioneer spokesman of PANDE, which is the Pan Niger Delta Forum. Uh, a fine morning to you, uh, Chief Sara Igbe, and uh, dare I say, happy independence. Good morning. Yes. And um, when I when I when I thank you for having me. Always our pleasure. When I state as uh, that as uh, dare I say happy independence, I was relating to some subject matters that I know um, you have on your mind. For instance, um, you are sort of a very much. How do I put this now? Uh, you, you're sort of highly interested in the effect um, of you know the situation that we're in, talking in particular about um, the removal of the subsidy on fuel and its effect, of course, all of Nigeria on the one hand, but then you have a notion that particularly in the Niger Delta uh, does bear uh, some sort of airing. Uh, am I right with that, Chief? Well, uh, you, are, you are very much right that uh, we the people of Niger Delta in the earnest sector, also as it relates to us. Yes. So we, we, the oil is produced from our backyard. Okay. We are suffering from the environmental degradation. We are being deprived of our traditional population of fishing and farming. And yet, the oil that we are producing, we are also paying the highest price. Besides, you are also stopping us from buying well, in jelly can to our boats, we don't have car. Most of us don't have car. We use boat. And you're also stopping us from using jelly can to buy fuel. So what do you want us to do? Mm. These are some of the issues I think we have to look at. And uh, our crack, we produce the oil. You don't want us to be empty. The NPDC, which house, we house almost all the divested uh, asset. You refuse us to be empty. Instead of allowing Saltana to be empty, you brought in expatriate. Expatriate to run it when we have more than enough competent Nigerians there are, I don't, who can manage. I don't recall any expatriate the, like that in the NMPC. I am telling you now the MD of NMPDC is an expatriate, the MD of the retail is also an expatriate. Just to prevent the people from the Niger Delta or South Out or the South of Nigeria to have to get to that position, okay. even though they are more than qualified. Mm. Okay. So um, actually, when that you is the situation we find ourselves. Okay. When you speak about the national, when you speak about uh, NMPC, um, you, 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 most Nigerians will remember Mele Kiari. Uh, you know. So I, I don't know what you meant when you said X. Well, uh, M N Malaki is the group executive, uh, the director, the GMD. The group executive officer, or the president of the NNPC. Yes. NNPC have subsidiaries. 
Okay, okay, other okay, companies okay. under okay. the LPC. Okay, 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 okay. okay. And uh, Melekiari, who has spent over 35 years in service, contrary to Section 8, Article uh, 020810, which says compulsory retirement at the age of 60 or 35, whichever one that comes first, remains there and refused Southerners, particularly the Niger Deltans, to occupy the position of MD of MPDC as well as uh, the other person retain. And what we are talking about today is petrol, scarcity, cost. These are expatriates that he has brought in instead of bringing in Niger Deltans or Southerners who are competent to run the place. You know, this is not fair to us as the people of Nanja Delta, and that is why we are here to discuss that by Lucky Ari, we pray by on, on, uh, the January 8th, it will be 60 years. If you refuse to retire at uh, the five years in service, I think you should retire at 60 years so that a Nanja Delta son or daughter who pass through the finance in the NPC should be the end of NPC because the person will be able to understand the dynamics. We talk about oil theft, we talk about uh, uh, stealing pipeline vandalism, we talk about all these things that are affecting production. But that is not the issue. The issue is, are the oil being produced? Then you don't have enough oil reserve. We have gas, enough gas. The gas we have in Nigeria can take us for more than 100 years. We cannot finish it, okay. no matter how we sell it. Okay. Yet, I'm paying high premium on gas. You encourage us to go to gas. Gas is now nobody. Uh, you cannot buy gas. Gas, gas is over 1,200, 1,500 per uh, liter. So these are the problems we have, KG. If we can pay gas that is abundantly in Nigeria that we are not uh, bothered to get, we are burning, we are flaring, and you cannot bring it to Nigerians at a cheaper rate, you take it up. You are looking for money. You are looking for money. Well, the carry came in when fuel was 145, and 150 per liter. Today, in the Niger Delta, we are buying fuel for 3,000 per liter. And yet, you don't want us to buy it with jerry can. The filling stations are not also there. This is the It's not giving us filling stations. You starve us. And you said we should buy 3,000 per liter. And people in Port Harcourt are buying 1,350 naira per liter. When it, you came in at the time, fuel was just 148. The fuel cost of fuel is not affecting the entire country. That cost of living is very high. Okay, no subsidy was the problem. You are paying subsidy. Who pays the subsidy? So then PC okay. MD. Since you came in, you are the one, you are the sole importer of petroleum. You are the sole seller of petroleum. And yet you are talking about subsidy. Who takes the subsidy and where is the subsidy money? You have okay. selling our I, I, uh, I, oil, crude oil. In the past, the crude oil feeds the federation account. For some months now, there is no money coming from the crude, crude oil sales. Federal government pays from the customs and taxes. What happens to all this money? Where are all this money going to? We, at the time you Milikari came to power, Water Refinery was working very well. Portaco Refinery was working but athletic. And you said you want to do turn around maintenance. You would have done it one after the other. You just shut down. You want to do turn around maintenance. So that you can have opportunity to be importing fuel. When you import fuel, you pay freight, you pay uh, uh, shipping charges, you pay uh, 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 customs, you will produce, you are bringing only the PMS and diesel, leaving the other byproducts for the country where you are producing it. You create job opportunity for people outside the country, leaving Nigeria as supposed to work. One refinery has engaged more than 20,000, 50,000 persons, direct Chief, and indirect staff. Chief but today, Sarai, the refineries are more bound. You want to oh. overhaul the refinery 2019 to today, five years, you cannot overhaul. My experience with the refineries in the past, they do it okay. section by section. I hear you. From um, one because refinery, they move to the other. They, do it, they don't just shut down the plant at a go. They are sure, make sure that the refineries are working so that they can be selling. Today, we don't have petrol. We are importing. 
Dangote has come on stream. You're having a problem with Dangote so that you can import. These are the problems that worries us. The economy, we cannot buy food. We cannot do anything. Everything is bad. The is you know, has I hear you. Trust. I hear you, Chief Sara I hear I you. you. Thank you very much. For the I, I, I let you speak. I, you I let you speak at length. To have their powers. Okay. Uh, Chief Sara I, I let you speak. I let you speak at length so that we could get the budget. entirety. The I, I let you speak at length so that we could get the entirety of your um, complaint because that's what it is. Um, and indeed, yes. we just we did want to hear it. Uh, but, but surely, I don't know, if, if one were not careful, um, one could actually deduce from what you are saying that you, you blame uh, an individual, whereas, as you know, the NMPC will be working according to uh, national policy and in the best interests of the country. But I understand that, well, be that as it is, there are, there are some, maybe more than some, in the Niger Delta that will think that enough attention and enough, um, what, what is the word that they use now, sort of positive discrimination has not been applied to them. But the NNPC has been working uh, according, as we are told, according to an official plan, an official policy that's been approved by everybody. And it's not, it's not as if there are no south-south uh, uh, um, uh, professionals within the NNPC. It's just that I think you are making a case now for the very headship. So do you appreciate that one might, from your submission, um, think that you're actually speaking about a particular individual being the problem uh, of the South-South within uh, the NMPC? Do, do you see that? Do you see how that is? Well, NMPC used to operate as a body, as a corporate body that has policies. We had various committees, like in the, in the subsidiaries. You have what to call the tender committee. After the tender committee, we have what to call uh, BESCOM, that's management committee. If the project is within that limit, if the procurement is within the limit of uh, the management of management committee, which happened to be $2 million. They will approve, they go ahead to procure and do the job without any reference to anybody. Then if it is more than $2 million, between $2 million and $5 million, they have to go to where they call DESCOM, headed by the group executive director, which is the group vice president. When it is more than the $5 million approval, it now goes to the NFPC management board uh, committee. They will look at it from $5 million to $10 million. When it is more than that $10 million, it goes to the NMPC board. That was how NMPC is structured. But today, one man wants to stay in his office to see even $1,000. So as a chief executive, it's like you are now a rubber stamp person. You don't, yeah, you don't get any, do anything until one man tells you it must be like this. That was not the culture of NMPC. And that was why NMPC was doing farewell because everybody was given a responsibility and they carry the responsibility, they carry out their job according to their responsibilities. But when everything now goes to one man, leaving the procedure, leaving the protocol to go to one man, the man may be very busy, may be out of the country until he comes. And that is why the referrals are not working. Why are they not working? It's funding. The funds are not released as appropriately as, as possible. The, the, the refinery MDs go tap and down begging instead of releasing the fund to them appropriately. It's a major problem. The same thing is applicable to the oil and gas companies. And, and you gas think, you, 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 you seem to be saying, sir, that had there been a different uh, GMD, for instance, um, it's possible that these challenges that you have identified might not have existed. That seems to be the thrust, the thrust of what you're saying. Now, Bellet Yari is the 19th GMD of an NPC. We have seen other GMDs how to operate. I am telling you, this is the process. This is how to operate in the NMPC. Melakiari came in and looked at taking an NPC as his personal asset and personal pro, uh, company. And that is why he's doing whatever he does. He does that without a blink of his eyes, and he can do and undo. Otherwise, how can a man appoint an expatriate 
for a company like MPDC, where all the assets of the country are, and where they can produce over one billion barrel. How can a hmm. man be there, Shell, who dictates? Over 25 has been locked down for how many years? Several years. And they want to reopen, and it's not open. And that's sweet crude of 45,000 uh, barrel per day. At this time that Nigeria is looking for money, at this time that we are crying for uh, fund, at this time where our foreign exchange is depleted, our reserve is depleted, you lock down, you allow Shell to lock down a plant. Not only, there's just one. There are several words like that. We are not going to explore activities since Belekiani came. No more exploration, no more new wells. They are not even doing walkover on the wells. How will they produce more? And to meet up our target. We have enough crude oil in this country that we can pass uh, OPEC quota and have enough for our local refineries. So that whatever okay. the local refineries are giving I, I, I them is like a dash. I, I hear you. And you are definitely, you are, you know, uh, speaking for uh, your own 